Thank you very much. My disclosures. I'm going to speak to you about a technology which you've all heard me speak about for 25 years, but finally we have um, FDA approval in a commercially available device. It's called the ArcScan Insight 100. And I'm going to go over the main corneal and trochlear applications over the next few minutes. All of you know that we started off with lab prototypes, the first ARC scanner for ultrasound. We developed a commercial prototype, prototype Artemis 1, the Artemis 2, and finally now we have a six degrees of freedom, high precision, simultaneous optical and ultrasound scanning device. The examination itself is very, very easy. The patient goes into a very soft, comfortable um, rubber eye seal. A little bit of water, about a few cc's of water is put in. The cornea is ranged if you're doing a cornea scan. And then the device auto senses the localization and does the scan sequence. You can see here. And four. And once these scans are complete, you literally go to the next page and you have the map of the uh, epithelium, the map of the uh, stroma, the full cornea. If it's a post-LASIK case, you'll see the flap thickness, the stromal component of the flap, the residual stromal thickness. We can scan the whole lens capsule. This is a, 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 a world first. This is a device that can scan in six degrees of freedom and therefore can capture all of the angles of the capsule. It means that finally, we can op where we're operating, we can actually see behind this dark side of the moon. We can actually now know what we're doing where we're doing it. It's the first time ever in anterior second surgery we'll be able to do that. We have high precision metrics of the uh, crystalline lens itself, which of course are going to be useful. And the repeatability data provided from the in-house studies uh, is superb. I mean, it certainly uh, matches what we've already published with the prototype data, which you've all been aware of, submicronic accuracy for epithelium. Um, and extremely high precision sulcus to sulcus measurements. As you can see from this comparative study, the reason why uh, there's controversy as to whether sulcus to sulcus measurements are worth using for ICL sizing is because, well, all of the lower frequency devices are imprecise, and so they don't give you better results. But using high precision data, we have been able to get better results. I'll show you those in a second. Let's talk about the cornea. You've all seen these complicated maps with all the different layers within the cornea after LASIK before, after difference maps. Um, you all know that I've published over 80 papers on this technology, uh, many of which have been on epithelium itself. We know that the epithelium changes in all situations whenever you change the stromal surface shape. But the most important one in clinical practice daily for me is the fact that the keratoconic epithelium is different from the normal epithelium. And eight years ago at this meeting, I presented for the first time the use of this technology. You can uh, have completely normal topographies, and yet these are actually cryptic keratoconic cases. These are the ectasia without a cause that we've been seeing. Likewise, you can have cases that you can't do because the keratoconus suspect comes up on the screen, but they aren't keratoconic, and you can prove that by epithelium. In our study of 1,500 eyes, we recovered 84% of the suspect eyes, meaning an overall 7% more surgery at our clinic for the last 10 years, thanks to using epithelial maps. The most important thing about intraocular surgery for me is that intraocular surgeons are really going to care about the epithelium now. Because you see, the epithelium causes regression after myopic LASIK, and it causes regression after hyperopic LASIK. And these corneas can have exactly the same keratometry, but there's a huge discrepancy in the epithelial power. And it totally explains why Hagus uses a different formula for his post hyperopic eyes. Normal eyes have different power. Yes, of course, they're, they're clustered, but there's a three diopter range of power within the epithelium. So that's an error that we're introducing into virgin eye cataract surgery. The big elephant in the room, ELP. Well, we've been talking about it for decades. We know it's the biggest problem that we have, but now we can do very high precision metrics to be able to finally analyze and see whether uh, or how much this is going to help us with our IOL predictions. And the elephant in the room, we can take it out of the room. Okay. Finally, ICL sizing. Um, we all know that sulcus to sulcus measurements are not very well correlated to external measurements. You can have the same white to white spurious fits with the lens. There is anatomy problems behind the iris that you might not be aware of. In our volt study, we had a predicted volt. Uh, we predicted our volt at 350. Using sulcus to sulcus, we got 367 microns average, which, was, which is way better than if we had used the, the, the star formula. And we got much higher precision, much higher predictability of these volt heights using sulcus to sulcus measurements. In fact, 54% of the time, we would have used a different lens had we used the star formula. In glaucoma, we can see Schlem's canal. 
we can use tissue characterization to measure uveoscleral outflow. This is a whole new technique. So overall, we're talking about a myriad of applications, an omnipotent diagnostic device, which has finally come to life. Thank you very much. So, uh, let's see, questions for Dan from the panel? How much does it cost? Uh, the same as a fully loaded Pentacam. How, how much is that? Uh, Fifty, sixty thousand dollars All right, so I'm going to ask you and the audience to vote with your app. Uh, you, you have to verify that. I'm not, I mean, the, you have to talk to the company. I don't know the numbers, but I'm, I'm, I, I, that's the number I heard. So go ahead and vote. From your app. Can, I, can I ask a question? How sure. is, um, it seems like um, high frequency OCT is yeah. sort of snapping your heels on the epithelial no. part. No. Yeah. It's, it, it is, I have three OCTs, uh, three RTVs in my clinic. I use it all the time. These are complementary technologies. The OCT is a quick and dirty measurement, high frequency ultrasound is the accurate measurement. And when we're talking about keratoconus screening, accuracy is what you want because the difference is going to be two to three microns in focal thinning of the epithelium. And as you know, the OCT has a three micron error. So, it, and it will never get better because of the, because of the wavelengths. The technology is very versatile um, and comprehensive. That's pretty cool. What's the most important <coughs> differential part of the technology for you? Well, the way I use it daily is for keratoconus screening. And it, it basically boosts our LASIK volumes because we can confidently do LASIK on patients who would have otherwise been told, sorry, you can't have it done. So, uh, you know, the nice thing about yes and too early to tell me is that's yes and that's no. But I guess the one thing I'll ask you is what does it replace in your practice? What is it going to replace? Um, it's additive. It increases our standard of care. It increases our safety. It increases our knowledge of what's going on, in a, in a, particularly in a post-op eye where we're not sure. You've all heard me talk about repair complications. I'm talking about that tomorrow, in fact. So it's, it's not going to replace anything. It, is gonna make, it makes your practice better. If you're a, a high-level practitioner, if you're someone who is dedicated to perfection as much as you can, you, you, you're going you're gonna to really enjoy having this. So it's, yeah, it's, it's better medicine. Do you make more money using it? Well, you make more money because you're doing more LASIK than you would have, and you're not having a lot of disappointed ICL patients who have to be taken, well, a lot, 2 to 3%, 1 or 2% of patients needing lens replacements within a week, and your long-term data with ICLs will be much, much better. Way, way, years after STAR has been paid, so, that's when the complications good, occur. Good, 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 good. Um, so, quick vote. We got we to move on. Yes, it's really a tell, though. Yes. Josh? Yes. Mandy? Yes. All right, you know, very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right.